I am unashamed. What about you? So, Jason, that was interesting because you just in Texas, we talked about on the last podcast. So, Texas has been, I guess you'd call it, opened up more uh, from the coronavirus. So, like, for now, a pretty good while. They were one of the first states to say, you know what? Numbers are down. We're basically going to open up businesses and that type of thing. Could you notice a difference being there? Did I mean, did it seem no. any different to you? I just, I was curious you remember, since you were just there. Texas is a big state, and uh, <laughs> I'm camping state. out in Austin. And Austin, how would I describe it? It it it's much more left wing than the rest of the state. It leans I know. left. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's like you would you can't go into a convenience store without a mask on, like here in Louisiana, and nobody said anything. So even without a mandate by the government. Or the governor, in that case, the people that still own the places are in some areas are still enforcing to. Well, know. I don't think it's the people working there. It's right. just you're, you know, these people. I mean, I was pumping gas, and without I'm at a gas station. So you're outside. I'm outside. I'm well over six feet. I'm, I would say sixty feet from. <laughs> And there's a guy walking in the store, and he says, wear your mask. Oh. And so I looked around. There was no one standing behind me. And I went, nod, gave him a nod. <laughs> I mean, what am I going to do, get upset? No. He just didn't like the way I looked. And uh, Well, you in convenience so, stores, you have more things, more encounters. No, I, well, it's because of the area. That I'm stopping. I'm saying, but you have about every once a month, I hear some different way of Jason having some kind of usually bad encounter at a convenience store. If Jason's going to ha- wind up in a shootout in a convenience store parking re- lot, that's it's what's It's one going. of the reasons I don't do convenience stores. Because <laughs> it's, it's not convenient. <laughs> it's, it's inconvenient. So it I don't do it because some jerk will walk by and say, where's your mask? And I mean, yeah. what, a long ranger? <laughs> I mean, Weston, Matt Dillon, what are, what are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, well, it's like... But you're right, uh, the more left-wing heirs you are, the more you're going to have people, you know, yeah. they call them Karens for some poor reason. I hate well, people named Karen. The because, source of all that is fear. Yeah, fear and, and also maybe just a little bit of minding other people's business. Well, I mean, let's face it. Why, I mean, I if you ever walk past somebody... And look over, and they're doing something you may or may not like, and you felt called upon to call them out sixty feet away for anything. Have you ever done that? I if I were an outlaw in the mid eighteen hundreds, in the days of Matt Dillon, <laughs> I wouldn't go I around. How long it's going to be? The only time I might ask, "Where's your mask?" If I were an outlaw and we're fixing to rob a stagecoach, and you, and if you don't want to let people know who you are. Put your mask on. But any other thing right there, it doesn't make much sense. Well, I thought that Lisa and I were walking past, uh, we were in a little strip mall, and we were walking past the door of a liquor store, and it had the sign on the door that you had to wear a mask. And I looked inside, and there were you know a bunch of people in there buying liquor, and they all had masks on. I said, would you have ever thought 10 or 20 years ago that, People that go into liquor stores would be encouraged to wear a mask. You know, how many times they get knocked off? You yeah. know, back in the day, I thought now it's just a weird society that we're Fear in. Fear <laughs> is a dreaded thing among the lost, and yeah. they're thinking, well, maybe this mask well, will save me. Some of but, it is. Some of it is not so much. We're back to the gospel again. <laughs> That's right. I don't think think it's as much. Like in that case, I was not breaking any agreed upon. Rule. You were actually and going by the, by way, the Jace, standards, right? I mean, by, by the way, Jay, you're, you're, to you're a Jesus man. What was the most yeah. oft question or statement made by Jesus concerning these matters? He was said, do, do, not, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Mm. But, however. Man, oh man, oh man. Do you know what number five was? Fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. I have a good lesson on that. I think I've given it before. Yeah. But I want to tell you this one story. Part of it is just living in a different society. But I think it's a it it's a fertile ground for sharing Jesus. And I'm real proud of my wife. She has numerous, you know, Bible studies going and she's just taking it on. But it's like Jeff surprised me. He's like, Ooh, he said, 
bring your golf clubs. So I knew it was a surprise. He wanted to take me somewhere. By the way, while you're there, mm -hmm. I've seen more people converted to Jesus in the last couple of years, especially during the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. that I've seen more people come to Jesus than at any other time in my life on the earth. Because yeah. fear, now, fear, fear, continue, fearful continue, people seek something strong. Continue your right. statement, Jason. So <laughs> he takes me to a place that he knows I wanted to go. It's a, I won't, I won't, I don't, I don't want to throw it under the bus because it was awesome. It was an awesome golf course. It's been on TV. There's a PGA event there. So I played know, there. Do the math, but I don't want to say what it is. So Jeff, like on the way, he's like, the only thing he said, you know, I went here once before and so I'll just tell you, because he was kind of looking at me in an <laughs> awkward way as I'm driving, like looking at my what I have on, how it's. By the way, when I went with him, he didn't he didn't have to do any of this. Just so you well, know, so just, he, I'm throwing that out. He there. said, so, so you I'm don't look like a golf pro. <laughs> well, Phil, look at me. So. <laughs> so anyway, here he said, here's what happened the last time I went here. I said, OK. As he's looking at me weirdly, I'm, I wasn't sure where this was going because I, I said I have a mask. And he said, no, no, you let me just tell my story. I said, okay. <laughs> he said, so I go out to the putting green. He's waiting on the people to who he's going to meet up with. And he said, a guy walks up to him and says, uh, sir, tuck your shirt in. And so he Tuck looked, your he, shirt in. Well, he looked down and Jelp had it like three quarters tucked in. But, you know, Jelp. He hadn't worked out in a while. And, <laughs> he got a little sag. <laughs> well, he's having a problem with 25%. <laughs> Staying tucked uh, in. Yeah. And so. so and he, we are on a golf course. <laughs> yeah. So, he, so he, 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 he makes the adjustment. And so then he says, I go to the driving range. And he said, a young woman comes out and says, sir. And cause, so Jelp looks down because he's <laughs> thinking he's sprung a leak here again. And she says, uh, can you turn your hat around? Because he had his hat turned around backwards. And so I was like, now I'm feeling uneasy about where we're headed. I was like, <laughs> he's like, so I thought, oh, no problem. So then before he tees off, he has to go to the bathroom. So he goes to the bathroom. He now has his shirt. What could be wrong with that tucked in. endeavor? <laughs> he has his hat turned around, so he makes looks in the mirror okay we're all good he said i turn around there's two older gentlemen just staring at me and that's he, always a bad sign in the restaurant in the restaurant exactly that's what i said <laughs> then i'm thinking i don't know about this place you know i'm surprised and, you didn't do a u-turn at this point so jeff said i look down thinking i i got what else more can i do Wrong. Sir, please don't urinate on your <laughs> shoes. Maybe that. So one guy says, sir, <laughs> you need a haircut. And oh, the other no. one. Whoa. Now look. Oh, and the other one, as in they were a team of confronters, said, and a shave. And Jeff said, I'll keep that in mind. And he said, <laughs> So I was like, Jeff, why are we going here? I, now, look. <laughs> he I is alerting you to, Jace, you have entered a a zone where you have the the the, the, the attire police. It's, it's the, in the, well, in, Jace, my... in the great, in the words of the great Ted Knight and Caddyshack, you should have realized that at Bushwood, some people just don't belong. Yeah, that, that's what he was saying. But I was thinking, now I can take my, I can tuck my shirt in, I can wear my hat. But when he said that, I thought, okay, we may have problems. <laughs> I, I mean, look, I've let myself go. So I've added another so, one to my list. Not only do I, I do not do convenience stores. I don't do golfing cor yeah. golf courses. So what's funny uh, is... Man. I wonder why I don't go out there. And as much as I don't care, I said, i tell you what, when we pulled up, and because I looked around and realized, ooh, this is so wanky. <laughs> Any place way, I that you feel like you can eat off the grass. That's right. And so I put my hair in my hat, yeah. and I... And Jeff said, yeah, that really helped a lot. <laughs> well, let me give you a little quote of a text I, I shared with the brothers yesterday. Oh, man. God does not do favoritism. Mm -hmm. He does not show favoritism, no matter what. 
the color of your skin, the clothes on your back, the wherever you came from, your ethnicity. No, God does not show favoritism, period. Therefore, we should be the same. And the counter to that, don't that, show favoritism. The counter to that is that old men who are members at swanky golf clubs do show favoritism. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and what made it worse? That's a club. microcosm of the current culture we live in. And Jace, it's a dangerous thing. Never doubt that. What made it favoritism worse? is the, is a is a brutal sin. What made it worse is because you got to play with a member. Yep. And of course, our member friends, they were they invite us into the clubhouse, you know. Because they're proud to know you're famous people, you know what I mean? And uh, so then, <laughs> Jeff and I, this is, this you can't make this up, we both forgot our wallets. And oh, so now, Lord. not only do we look like what everybody's thinking we look like. You don't like, have any money. I actually am the equivalent of a homeless man in this place. I don't have one dollar. My brothers, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting, might be a golf course. Bill, they don't care. Wearing a gold ring and fine clothes and a poor man in shabby clothes also comes in. We're on the golf course. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there, you you sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? It's a dangerous thing, favoritism. From top to bottom, in the smallest of cases, and you got a glimpse of it. What you and you know, I think there's it, a biblical answer for that trash. <laughs> I think it affects you because you know I'm a decent golfer and I played really well. But on the first tee box, a little nervous. All these people are looking at me. I've already. I'm worried about all this. So yeah, I just topped it off yeah. the tee. A third. Of I was it. like, you know what? Why am I doing this to myself? Yeah. Why am I here? A third of our congregation happened to be homeless. So. And the police said they've dealt with them for years. So now we're there and there are our brothers and sisters and they're homeless. I think to bring up how you're dressed would be a little much. So, Dad, Dad, you know who is a really good golfer and has been his whole life and loves golf? You'd never think this. Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper. You remember the old rocker, Alice Cooper, the long hair, the crazy man? Yeah. Yeah, the the, I'm the not best, best tune he came up with schools out, <laughs> schools out forever, forever, forever. My yeah. boy, my boy, by bringing that up is, can you imagine the looks Alice Cooper probably got rolling into some of these swanky golf? Ooh, he clubs. got a little heavy on the eyelash, Maybelline, <laughs> but uh, other than that, oh Alice, what can you say? <laughs> so, Jess, I doubt you're the first, probably. Per, person of fame that has a certain look about him that has been uh, looked at. They well, tell me Alice Cooper's dad was, a, in fact, a preacher, a, I think a Baptist preacher. Really? And then Alice went rogue, you know, and, and uh, I don't know how that finally worked out. Maybe well, he's They repeated. say the hardest people to reach are preachers, daughters, and sons. That's true. Yeah. I'll never forget when Dad and I and Mom met, um, what's the guy's name from Aerosmith, the lead singer for that group? Yeah. Tyler or whatever. Tyler, Tyler's. Something. Yeah. Anyway. Steve Tyler. Steve Tyler. Uh, I didn't hear that. It just hit me. I, I was going to. So we but met Stephen Tyler. Hunter. Well, that's what I was going to say. We met him in the Trump at the lobby hotel one night, and he was carrying a pizza and a little bitty Pekingese dog. <laughs> I mean, you look up here, this guy. You recognize him. How could you not? He's holding a pizza and a little bitty dog, and we're checking in, and we are look- and we didn't say anything. We used to being around famous people. And he looks up, he said, hey, I got one of your Duck decoys. He pointed. <laughs> <laughs> he pointed at dad, and dad, we didn't correct him. But it, it, as dad was like, "Is that right?" He said, "Yeah, man, I'm into duck hunting yeah. up in New Hampshire on my yeah. farm." And it was just a surreal moment to be the Steven Tyler, the, the old I did leave heard. there with a, with a, a new thought for Tyler. I'm thinking, you know, the old dude ain't all bad. <laughs> yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. That's the right. stuff affects you. You say it, does it? Do not but, show favoritism, even to you, Tyler. That's right. All right, let's take a break. So one of our longest uh, standing sponsors is a, is a company called Keeps. 
And uh, basically their premise is they want to try to help you keep your hair. And I don't know, Jace, we kind of laugh at it because we're all pretty hairy. Uh, <laughs> probably have the shortest hair of the three of us that, that we would be the, the pitch men for a, a company called Keeps. But they got a great product. And basically they, what they say is you can't get your hair back uh, from their product, but they can help you hold on to it. So if you want to check these guys out, uh, you go on their website, which is keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash door. And they're going to basically ask you a few easy questions. Um, you send them some pics of your hair. A licensed doctor reviews all your information to make sure that the hair loss treatment is for you. They ship it straight to your door. So you can order it right off your couch. Keeps dot com slash door. You get 50 percent off your first order. Of treatments. So if you don't want to stress out about your hair, keeps.com slash door. Check them out. You know what's crazy is, you know, we're in Acts 18 where he went to Corinth and because you, you realize that in these letters, I mean, can we say the Corinthian church probably was here so that no other church could say, oh, you don't understand how many problems we have. (laughs) But, you know, I did They will always compete for the worst church of the first century. What's your your old uh, the old old guy that says a tough crowd? Who is it? Rodney Dangerfield. Old Dangerfield had it right because the Apostle Paul would agree, you know, tough tough crowd here. (laughs) However, (laughs) however... (laughs) You know, when he got down to in verse nine of 18, the Lord, because he was getting persecuted from he was preaching at the synagogue. And which is why, you know, you got to remember, Corinth was a turn into this port city. And I think actually was it Nero who built that canal still there today. I don't think it's wide enough now for commerce but i think now it was a place where a lot of world travelers naval right naval right. people come and going and you know well that this was is like the marine corps got oh they got a group of them you know the soldiers port and city, yeah. everybody getting well when you there. when you think of them having the ability to give gifts miraculous gifts well the speaking in tongues would come in handy here because if you're trying to get jesus to the world and you got the main biggest city in Greece, you would need that gift at Corinth. Oh, it's awesome, you know. And and he was you having know, trouble with the religious people, so then he just goes to the Greeks. Well, when you have a big city, the biggest in Greece at that point, we know what big cities are like. I just described one. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, frivolous behavior, mischievous going on. So then when you get over into the Corinthian letter, you're like, oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I'm starting to understand why. Yeah. You know, it's surreal for Dad and I. We were in Athens. We mentioned the last time we were talking from Acts 17 when you're we were driving to a location and it hit me because I look up. It's like we're on their version of an interstate, and the sign's like Corinth exit right here. And then you go up a little further, the Macedonian exit, and I was like, all these places we read about in the Bible. They're yeah. still there. I oh, mean, yeah. I mean, there's or yeah. some version of it is still there. And, and it there's just, still a little bit of mischief going on among the population in Greece. We saw Greece that. has a lot of problems. Yeah, yeah. but I, at this time it was a roaring. I mean, they were they were rolling, you know. But what I was going to say is what what appealed to me in this story. I mean, there was a couple of verses that stood out. I mean, one later on is. <laughs> It's probably the most obscure verse in the Bible because we were talking about how we look and our hair and all this. But, you know, when they they sailed off after he met Priscilla and Aquila, it's just uh, it's a where is that? I, I was reading this the other night where it said that Paul had made a vow to he cut, cut his, his hair. hair. Yeah. yeah. In verse eight. Oh, in the second part of verse 18, it says before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at, I don't even know how you say that. Centuria. Centuria, because of a vow he had taken. I thought, hmm. I wonder what all that's about. <laughs> and why put it in here? <laughs> that's right. It was just kind of an off point for Luke, but it obviously so, meant something to Paul. Well, when I read that, so I thought. So he shaved his head. Yeah, because he had taken a vow. So I thought, stay away from making vows <laughs> considering hair. That's Just right. stay away from that. That's right. It's like when you get caught up in the emotions and you make a bet, you know, with yeah. so, with somebody. I mean, it's like I'm, uh, I was talking to Willie the other day, and he bet somebody 
uh, a guy we play golf with on who could lose the most weight in in a period of time. I think it was 30 days. It was a month, yeah. And uh, I heard the story the other night from the guy. And Willie lost by one pound. Yeah, one and pound. So, and so I, I forgot what the uh, – what the winner got? What was on the table? It was uh, it was but, uh, it was ten dollars a pound for what yeah, that's they what lost. it was ten dollars a pound. So, but I mean, you know, <laughs> so it's three hundred bucks because they were lost about ten. I pounds. mean, if you whipped them, I mean, this could get this could get expensive. And the guy <laughs> Willie was well, Willie's got plenty of money, but the guy he was <laughs> battling right. against, he mows yards. And not that that's not needed, <laughs> that's but right. he ain't got a lot and of money. And he's a retired firefighter, <laughs> so he he told me he was like. How I was so nervous. He said, because I didn't know. I thought, man, those Robertsers are so competitive, you know. Yeah. And then Willie said, uh, he, he comes out to his car one day and he looks on his thing and there's a, a box of donut, flaming hot yeah, donuts. Yeah, that was Willie's approach. <laughs> Willie said, I spent a small fortune <laughs> on having catered deliveries to everywhere this guy went in the Twin Cities. I thought, now that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> he, so, he spent more money than he lost just trying to trip him up which shows you so much of well, Willie's personality but but that was just a light-hearted point but in <laughs> nine and, and ten when he says one night the lord spoke to paul in a vision he says don't be afraid keep on speaking do not be silent for i am with you and no one is going to attack and harm you and i love this line it says because i have many people in this city which he was talking about corinth mm -hmm. which i for the ones who are sharing the gospel, though, that's that's a good code to remember. I look this. I remember a time in my life where I read that, where it it changed my the way I, I viewed things because yeah. I thought I want to be this guy from God's perspective in West Monroe, Louisiana. Right. And you know, I was talking about Austin earlier. I want to be that guy. Yeah. Because I'm not sure how many people he has in that city, even though it's a very big place, but. That made me realize, you know, God is always working. He works through Jesus. He works through Jesus in us. He was doing that at this time, and nothing has changed since then. He still does that. And for him, you know, Jesus to say that in red letters, I, I think that's a profound statement that everyone as a disciple of Jesus should think about yeah you know are you looking at the opportunities because i think a lot of times god may be sending you people and you just you're not looking at, at it from that perspective or they need to think about the mindset too because it says uh uh paul so after being told don't be afraid i have many people he said so paul stayed for a year and a half teaching them the word of god to him this thing about, you know, this this Jesus thing is getting in my way. He just stuck a year and a half right there, just camped out there. Yeah. Well, you well, imagine, yeah. yeah, 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 people coming and going, tough town, tough crowd. You say, he's right in the middle of it. And he said, don't be afraid. Well, he also had special motivation. Can you imagine the people he dealt with? Because I'm just looking at it 2,000 years later at the ones who are coming and going, and not a whole lot has changed out. Yeah. Not a whole lot has changed. But I do think people a lot of times are afraid to speak up because, and let's face it, our, our culture is not, in some circles of our culture, is not very popular to have a message about Jesus. I, I, was, reading, yeah. I was reading about a little third grade girl in Mississippi, and because I keep up with a group called ADF, which does a lot of religious liberty uh, court cases. And she wore a mask to school because they had to wear a mask. So, and it said, Jesus loves me on the mask. Yeah. She comes in there and they say, nope, can't, can't wear that here Yeah, in her school. Made her take it off. So she goes home, you know, she tells her parents, I guess they gave her another mask. Well, they went up to the school. They're like, why can't you wear, because, you know, they knew that you can wear BLM, you can wear this, you can wear that, you can wear whatever. But no, Jesus loves me at this little school. You know, going back a little bit. I mean, bit. and I thought to myself, that's just, it was a little girl. She, she probably didn't make the, you know, I'm making a stand. But now this case is going to go to court because you, you try to shut it down. That's In these saying. United States, four or five years ago, they ran me through the ringer. You know, they just came and the attack was full bore. I, I looked up, you know, and I'm sitting there, you know, Bill O'Reilly's expounding on what an idiot I am. And they're all <laughs> got to, they had priests come along and say, well, what do you expect from some redneck? Duh? 
And they're all. You were well, a week of discussion. Uh, all on cable I did news. Yeah. was quote a Bible verse, and it got them all stirred up. <laughs> well, and Al, I will tell question, you and your but, brother there, that helped me more than anything that's ever happened. That helped me more to say, yep, I'm on the right side of this mm-hmm. thing. I'm going full speed ahead, yeah. and I'm not going to veer to the right or the left. I'm just not going to but It helped my faith yeah. when the attack was at its peak. I said, yep, now, now I'm beginning to understand what the Apostle Paul and all of them yeah. are saying. You, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom mm-hmm. of heaven. You well, and it's, well. Up to, it's up to other people to hang on just let's take a break. So a lot of people these days, it's all been about, and except for you, Dad, uh, computer screens and uh, earbuds, you know, because every meetings, I mean, it's all about the computer. You're trying to listen. I fled from the computer when it was first introduced. And I and I have no complaints about doing so. You probably don't have any earbuds either, do you? That you listen to, listen earbuds, to podcasts. Uh, there's a few earbuds, but not <laughs> buds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a whole other sp- the sponsorship issue. The earbuds. Well, I've one, had them. <laughs> one of one of our uh, sponsors is a company called Raycon, and so I got a pair of their uh, earbuds, and uh, they're really really good. The thing I like about them the most is that they fit your ears better because I've had some different kinds that will fall out. You know, I, I listen to it mostly on air. It's hard to get that right. Yeah, because, you know, and people's ears are different, you know, right. so they've got different ways of putting it in there, too, with some different uh, pieces that help it hold in there better. So it's really good. Uh, Bluetooth pairs quickly, easily. You get up to six hours of playtime uh, when you're listening to it. So ch- you want to check these guys out. They're offering 15% off all their products for our listeners. So you go to buyraycon, R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash unashamed, 15% off your entire order. So it's buyraycon dot com slash unashamed and check them out. Well, what I was going to say is, so you get the the foundation for where the church at Corner started. So you know you had people there, and I don't think it's an accident that a power couple, one of God's power couples, Priscilla and Aquila, were part of that foundation there. Because when speaks you speaks well of husband and wife teams, well, that's I, right. I, I like that too. Which is going to get when you get to Corinthians. One of the problems was the gender identity right. issue. Big time. When I even thought about that when you were mentioning that a minute ago, if that might be somehow connected to some of the discussions he had about hair. Maybe that was in well, anticipation. Of yeah, there was a lot of homosexual behavior going on at that time and, oh. at, and at the current time. And, it wasn't just that. And gender bending stuff. Well, like right. Today, yeah. and, and when you read First and Second Corinthians, you're like, oh, there, there, you had all these problems. Not just that, you had divisions, that, you know, mm-hmm. the lawsuits among each other. They were getting drunk on the Lord's Supper. Pretty much anything you could think of. You couldn't tell. You what? couldn't tell male from female by observation. Well, and, right. And the apostle Paul ran into that, the hair thing, and all of that. Well, speaking of weird rebukes, you know, I was in a building, which, you know, there's multiple passages about that God does not live in buildings. I was in a building, and was confronted by two older gentlemen, and they said, "You need to take your hat off when you come in the building." I said, thank you. And I kept walking. <laughs> and so they kept coming. They were like, as in now. I mean, I, they were, they went the second leg. And I said, appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kept, that's that's kept, Christianity at yeah. its finest. Well, one of them quoted uh, the verse in Corinthians where it said, if a man uh, doesn't uncover his head. And so I'm like, oh, they, they, they come. Not in love, but, you know, they come with verses. <laughs> and I said... They come with verses. I said, gender issues. Now, that stopped it, because then they thought I was crazy. They didn't know what I was talking about. But I was referring to the passage that they thought about. The context Be- of what was going yeah, on. Yeah, because I believe <laughs> the problem was you had, you know, men looking like women, and women look like men. Mm-hmm. They were all gathered up saying, yep. hey, so... What the problem is, and what I wanted to bring up, and I taught a class on this. I I have a few notes. I mean, this was years ago, so I don't really remember off the top of my head. But some of the things I I wrote down is, I think it's interesting that I believe 
their problem was that they had been spiritually decapitated, which is the worst thing that can happen to a church. If you lose connection with the head, which Colossians 2.19 says that. You know, he says in the early part of, of chapter 1, he says Jesus is the image of God. And then chapter 2, he's like, you've been given fullness in Christ. All the deity lives in bodily form in Jesus. Then it says, and you were circumcised, and the law was canceled. Well, then he goes into people that are in a church that have lost connection with the head, and it goes in to some of the same problems that in Colossians that was happening in Corinthians. But the last verse of 2 Corinthians, the last verse in, in chapter 13 and verse 14, he says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. If you started with that verse and went backwards, you you figure out that was their problem. Yep. Because you think about it, they had human divisions. Well, what what is the what is the answer for that? Realizing God is your father, because that brings everybody together. He yep. made us all from one man, he made all nations of men. You think uh Jesus is our Lord. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So you say, well, what does what does Jesus, uh, you know, answer as far as problems? Well, look at the look at what their problems were. They were divided. Uh, they had this pride issue about we are who we are. You know, no matter what, they had lost their purpose because their purpose was basically to go meet at the building and fight. You can make an argument that that same problem is front and center in these United States of America 2,000 years later. Yeah, so I think not not recognizing Jesus as Lord uh, made them where they they weren't living out their purpose because they had lost connection with, they're the body of Christ. They represent Jesus, but that wasn't happening in the world. They were gathering up in the building and then the third thing, the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, they were all pursuing the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but were lacking in the fruits. Correct. Right. And, yep. uh, and so that leads to human performance. They were basing everything, oh, look how, how great I am. Look so you how think, many things I can do. So you yeah. think about it, if you go by human divisions, human pride, and human performance, that is a recipe for chaos which is what was going on here and that's why i think he said this hey then and now yeah think about this chapter 14 of first corinthians which is where all the 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 things about the gifts and all this this uh view of the women's role in the church because they were functioning in pride in their own performance and in divisions and so that's a very controversial passage. He, in fact, he started off saying, "Stop thinking like children." I mean, he's rebuking them. He's like, "You've got women hollering from the back while somebody's up talking." And so he's, you know, and people are experiencing these gifts uh, emotionally. Well, what is chapter fourteen in between? Just think about this, without getting into the weeds of the details of that. Well, chapter thirteen is the greatest chapter in the Bible about love. And chapter 15 is a reminder of the gospel. Yep. So you say, well, what is their problem? I, I know this. They had a love problem, and they had a Jesus a lack of Jesus problem. And that was sandwiched in between all the chaos that was going on. So what's happened in our world today, unfortunately, is a lot of people will go to chapter 14, and try to figure out some truth there on how to operate with, you know, the roles, our gender roles, or the miraculous fruits of the spirit, or and they're they're missing the point. There there was a love issue, and there was a a disconnect of of Jesus issue. Whatever happened in chapter fourteen, that's minor compared to those two issues because if you don't have love and you don't have jesus as your as your focus well what do you think is gonna happen well right you know <clears throat> and so, then it was it was destroyed them. let's take another break 
So that was the foundation for my study. I did point out that in 1 Corinthians alone, Jesus is Lord is mentioned, that phrase, over 90 times, which is a, hmm. which is a profound fact. Because yep. you say, what, 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 do you, what do you think their problem is? They hadn't surrendered to Jesus. He was not the focus. They were not connected. They weren't getting the relational aspects of this. Yep. They got all hyped up on seeing the miracles and then trying to apply that to each little group of all the divisions. That's why when you get to 1 Corinthians 12 and he talks about the body's a unit, we're all part. You got ears, you got nose. You know, all these famous verses that we use. He's like, we're, we were baptized into one spirit. There's no male or female. Or he says the same thing he says in, in Galatians. So he was trying to get them to focus, you know, under Jesus as authority. And that's why when he got to 2 Corinthians, he started sharing with what your purpose is here. And so he's like, we have the power in jars of clay. You know, we commend ourselves to people's conscience. We're new creations. It goes on to say we're ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. For God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so and that we these... might become the righteousness of God. I mean, it's like we he wants to use you. So, so it comes back to the same thing to finish my just kind of outline of what the class I did is that you can either be selfish even in church, or you can surrender to Jesus and, and let him use you. And it doesn't matter whether you're outside of a church or inside, the same principle applies. You can get so caught up in the great things that happen and miss who's given them to you. Yeah, and pretty well he said the same thing to the Roman church. You have no <laughs> excuse, you who pass judgment <clears throat> on someone else, for whatever point you judge the other you're condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same things. There was a lot of that going on at Corinth. Now, we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. When you, a mere man <clears throat> or a mere woman, pass judgment on them, your neighbor, your brothers, and yet do the same things, do you think you'll escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you toward repentance. He says, you, 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 that's what was going on in Corinth. It was just a group after group after group, and they're all accusing each other, yeah, 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 we got it, you don't, you yeah. shouldn't do that. What, what's interesting about that is, Dad, so you go from the, the ancient church, which obviously we're reading about these situations, and you come to the more modern era church, and the same mistakes are made. Same mistakes. All we do is splinter into groups that yeah. think this passage means this thing, so we're going to build our whole deal on this. This one's over here. And, and I think you lose then your sense of being able to impact the culture, which was Paul's whole point here. Instead of, instead of think about it, you got this idea about worrying about the hair in 1 Corinthians 11. If you look at our culture, which every single day, goes down more of a rabbit hole about people's pronouns, what that's they right. call themselves, a he, a they, a he. That, that, that's right. <clears throat> we should be able to speak to that. Yep. And yeah. So you know what? Here's how God made us. And that's Paul was very clear. And so we unfearfully, unashamed, make those statements into our culture. I was watching. So the one department we would be interested in in the government, probably maybe the IRS, but the other one would be the Department of the Interior, right? Because it's all about conservation, hunting lands, Everything about the Department of the Interior is about the great, vast United States. I was watching a meeting the other day. It just showed a clip of it. And so they were kicking off this meeting. So there was three government officials kicking off a meeting of the Department of the Interior with some oil and gas people. They're having a little sit down. The first three women who work for our government, they're bureaucrats in the Department of the Interior talking about oil and gas, how it affects our conservation, spent the first Three minutes of their speech, given their pronouns, what they get called, that I work in an area that was once the ancient lands of blah, 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 and this particular. I mean, they spent three minutes basically given putting their left wing ideology yeah. out there. And I thought to myself, but, this is the problem with our whole culture. I mean, like. I, that, think, I think a lot of religious uh, rules have contributed to that. 
you know, and I'll tell you what just happened. It mutes us. It doesn't allow us to speak into it, I think. Well, and I just think that, that some of the ways that churches apply, you know, that 1 Corinthians 14 where it says, you know, in the churches women are to remain silent and, you know, they're not allowed to have authority over man. And so, well, if I was a woman reading that and I wasn't a follower of Jesus, I was like— what the heck's going on here? Right. I, that, what are you saying? You're better than me, you know. So I had two sisters that you know well that used to live here. They moved off. They were in town, and uh, real close to our family. Love. They love Jesus, you know. And they asked if they come by, and they just wanted to ask me some Bible questions. So they did. This was when I got back in town from the last event. We sat there and probably talked three hours. And, mm-hmm. and they asked me numerous questions. But one of them is they asked me about the women's role in the church. And they were asking questions about 1 Corinthians. So I thought, now here I am, you know, because they have, their their heart is right. They love Jesus. Yeah. Their life is, uh, you know, consistent with godly principles. But it's just, they, they just, they want to know. And yeah. so I thought, you know, that's our problem in the church. We don't. We don't articulate and don't study enough to help. Here's two young women who I think will be fantastic leaders yep. in the church. So I said, well, look, here's what you got to remember. And I brought up, we had a one time, you know, Sadie, my niece, she has a pretty well global outreach for Jesus. Mm-hmm. She uses her platform, which we all received, you know, from our little duck show. And then she was on Dancing with the Stars. Well, she's out there sharing Jesus, and I know her heart. We, we know Sadie, you know. She Man. she has a heart for the Lord oh, yeah. and is a dynamic speaker. And God built her the biggest platform because of that. Hang yeah. on, Jess, let's take her last break. So she gets up and speaks at one of the local churches, you know, and, well, somebody asked me about that. They're like, because it was like a Sunday morning, and they're like, you know, what about these verses? She, she shouldn't have done that. I said, wait. Are you crazy? I mean, that was my initial response. But then I said, you know what? Because it kind of was a weird conversation, but I I hadn't studied enough to have a quick answer. So I did. And not only did I think he was crazy based on what I read, I, I now could tell him why. And so when they asked me about the women's role, well, I had that information ready because I'd already done the st- study over Sadie. I was like, and I told him, I was like, let me bring this up. Now here's a girl, here's a young single single girl at that time she's married now. I said and she's out sharing Jesus with everybody. I said when you look at the church at at Corinth, number 1, this is a new church. Where are the elders? And you say what are elders? Elders are husband and wife teams because then the qualification for elders he says they should be the husband of but one wife and this whole church was helped started by a husband wife team priscilla and aquila and i know when god said what man is joined to get i mean uh, what god is joined together talking about male and female matthew 19 let man not separate the two have become one god views that as as one unit now, I told the two young sisters, I said, now, I do think the church has not adequately shown that because I think when the when the elders meet, and you know how I feel about that, I think it should be them and their wife at all times. They're a unit because I think they would give a perspective on things like this. So let's say a young girl, Sadie, who's out doing great things to apply this to 1 Corinthians 14 to, to finish my point. She comes in and somebody says, hey, I think we should have her get up and speak and share all the great things she's doing in the world. By the elders making that decision and then she gets up in front of men and women, there's no longer an authority issue. Right. This this is something awesome that she's sharing and the elder teams that God put in place in numerous lists have decided this needs to be shared. And you say, well, why why did he say that in Corinthians? And where would it be wrong? Where it would be wrong is if Sadie's sitting on the back row while someone else is speaking, and she stands up and starts hollering, saying, listen to what I'm doing across the world. Well, now we're all looking around like, 
what in the heck's going on here? Right. Which would cause chaos. And you which know, was what was happening. Which is what was happening here. Well, two totally different situations. Well, look, both these girls I shared that with, they got they got teary eyed because they thought, well, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And they said, why has no one told us that? I said, I don't know. I guess you didn't ask. <laughs> but it made them feel like, oh, wow. And so what I did was I went over and read this, what I mentioned a while ago, 2 Corinthians 4, 5, and 6, about us being ambassadors and us, uh, God making his appeal through us. I said, does anybody deny that that's men and women? And they're like, well, of course it is. I said, well, how come it's okay for us to represent God, male or female, outside the church building, but it's not okay inside? Yeah, it makes no sense. I said, I think we've missed what the problem at Corinth was. When you get disconnected from the head and you're not getting your identity Mm. as being sons and daughters of God, where there is no male or female, he says it you know, in 1 Corinthians 12. I said, that's why I think the churches have done it a disservice because they made a rule that, oh, you can glorify God as a woman outside of the building, but when you come in here, sit down and shut up. That's right. Well, yeah. I wouldn't like that either, you know, and I think it all came from a, a misdiagnosis, and I'm sure people uh, uh, disagree with me, and you know what, that's fine. Study it and yeah. form your own conclusion, but I'm 100% sure that God looks at male and female in complete equality as soldiers of the cross, and there are units that are deemed by churches as leadership. And that's where, when you want to talk about authority, those couple, power couples, are getting their authority from Jesus Christ, and they're making decisions about who's speaking and who's you know, talking. And so after having said all that, my wife getting up and speaking in front of thousands of people with me on the front row would not bother me one whit. You oh, say, because there's nothing, we're a team. Because she does that in song. Mm-hmm. And I do that, you know, in speech. Well, what is the difference? What are we splitting hairs? There's no rules in that. Plus Philip's daughters, he had, what was it, three daughters? Four daughters. Four daughters, and they prophesied. Mm-hmm. You're like, what were them girls you doing? Think, and that's why we just did a series on Acts at our church. Uh-huh. And and so I, what I wanted to do was tell modern stories that go along with these stories we read about in the book of Acts. Well, that's men and women. So we heard great stories, great testimonies of people whose lives have changed, men and women. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. why would I want to cut off half of our workforce? You know, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. But the bottom line is, Al, if people, when it's one thing to say you're focused on Jesus, but if you're going around a building telling people to take their hat off, or because you're going to invite people from the world, mm-hmm. and they don't know you're, rule your made up rules and you're going to be way more offensive and burn a bridge of sharing Jesus with people. If you're trying to figure out these little subtleties about how we're going to operate on a Sunday morning, yeah. it's terrible. Well, look, Jace, one, one, one Wednesday night years ago, an older gentleman that we all know, he came up to me and I was teaching that night and there were three guys, three visitors that had come in. They all had their hat on. They were sitting over there on the side he came to me first. He said, are you going to go over there and tell them those three guys to take their hats off or am I? I said, you know, it's one of those moments you just have. I said, neither you nor I are going to go over there and tell those three visitors to take that hat off. I said, I said, if you do, then you and I are going to have a serious conversation when I'm done here. And he looked at me. I'll never forget his eyes got so big. And he went over there and sat down. He never said a word. I was thinking these three young guys that come in here to hear me teach, and the and what you're going to do is march over there and offend them right off the bat over wearing a hat on a Wednesday night in the church building. I want to I want to read this. I was hot to your point, Jason. (laughs) So I'll prophesize. I prophesy. You prophesy. Missy prophesies. Say to you, whoa, wait a minute. What? It's a family structure. Mm -hmm. You say you have men and women. You say, and the whole bunch prophesy. All, all it is is they speak the word. That's they right. speak the word Lisa, of God. Lisa does too. Yeah, they're it, not like they're not like some way above somebody. No, it's just what they do. Because if you listen, you'll say, "Hmm." At a personal well, level, my wife is better than me. You know, you're going I mean, along, there, and all, all of a sudden it's male, male, male. Then whoa, female, female, well, then male. <laughs> well, we're almost out of time, so I just want to say, I think subtly, what I was saying 
is I think the disconnect is most churches just have men as viewed as the leadership. Right. And where I have a problem with that is they're married in Christ and they're assembled power it's team. It's an age just, old just, struggle. Yeah. And I, I think they've missed that yeah. because I think if they would, 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 uh, make that public, even in their leadership, in their uh, meetings, in their, mm. even when they get up in front of the church. You know, I've been to some churches where, like, the pastor and his wife get up. I love it. It's good. Because yeah, Missy and I do that mm. at some event. So I wanted to read this. This is the last section in First Corinthians 16. It Nobody ever reads these types of things. But based on everything I've said, I think there's some subtleties here that are kind of humorous and somewhat disturbing because our application's off. But at the end of 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 19, it says the churches in the province of Asia, these are his final greetings. It says they send you greetings. Well, here's Aquila and Priscilla come up again. They greet you warmly in the Lord, and so does the church that meets at their house which is so opposite of the problems that were happening where this couple is doing what we're, you're supposed to be doing. Do, well, you, do you not think she's doing any speaking? <laughs> it, it just seems ludicrous That's right. when you look at the big picture of what was happening. Then it says, all the uh, brothers here send you greeting. And for all these police, these church police, look at this next verse. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Well, there's a direct command. While you're taking the hat off, why are you not going around making sure everybody's kissing each other with a holy kiss? Which is the problem you get into. Right. Boy, when, throw, throw that in the middle of the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, and then in verse 22, which I, is the point I made, when you don't focus on that, that where I started, which is we're sons and daughters of God, we're followers of Jesus Christ and representatives of him, and we have the Holy Spirit in us. When you're not focusing on that relationship, you start getting into these little subtle things that you think are important that are not. Yeah, that's true. And so then he says this, which I think this is a profound, profound verse and a bumper sticker moment in 22. It says, if anyone does not love the Lord, a curse be on him. Come, O Lord. When you don't love Jesus as your Lord, which he said it over 90 times in 1 Corinthians, Jesus is Lord. Everything should be revolved around that premise. And if it's not, chaos ensues. So there's a Corinthian overview. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.